Blackjack is a card game played between a player and a dealer. The player starts with two face-up cards and wants to get a higher combined value than the dealer, who starts with one face-up and one face-down card. On their turn, they take more cards one at a time. If either person has a value of more than 21, they bust, that is, they lose. While the player has free choice of taking random cards or not, the dealer must follow a set of rules, that is an algorithm, when taking or not taking cards. The dealer must take cards until their total is greater than or equal to 17. Let's visualize code, which implements the dealer's algorithm using functions, while loops, and lists, and later we will implement simulations using four range loops. As we visualize this code, the variables will be seen to the right of the code, and the input output will be in the console beneath the code. The import random statement gives Python access to more functionality than by default, specifically code useful for dealing with random numbers. We will use this later to emulate randomly shuffled cards. The def keyword, short for define, tells Python to make a new custom function using this indented block of code in yellow. The word after def is the name the programmer wants the function to be called, random underscore card. The parentheses after the name indicate this function has zero parameters or inputs, and it has one output indicated by the return statement. Def is used on line seven to define a second function. Again, the indented lines of code after the def keyword are what will be in this second function. This function will be named dealer underscore busts. This time, there is one variable name in the parentheses, indicating the function has one parameter. The function has a return statement, so we know it will have output. Note that after defining these functions, we skip over that code. Python has set the code aside, but will not run the code until we tell it to in a moment. To start, we want the user to type in what face-up card the dealer has, and in this case, the user types in six. The input function always returns a string, notice the quotes, so we need to convert it to an integer before using it. The int function will do this conversion, basically removing the quotes from the value. Then we will use a single equal sign to assign that six to a variable called card. Next, we call the dealer busts function using the six from the card variable. Typing the name of the function, followed by parentheses, tells Python to run the code we set aside earlier using the values inside the parentheses. When Python starts a function, it allocates a fresh space for variables so as not to interfere with variables from other functions. These different variable spaces are known as different variable scopes. The first thing the function does is copy the passed in values into the parameter variables inside the empty scope. In this case, the six is saved to the face up parameter variable and then the code begins to run. The dealer has multiple cards, so we create a list to hold them all in one variable. These square brackets tell Python to create a list with whatever is inside them. However, we don't have two values yet. The second element is another function call that Python needs to evaluate by calling the random card function. Calling this function introduces a fresh empty variable scope, and this time Python has no parameter variables to create. The code here calls yet another function called choice from the imported random library. We want to emulate taking a random card from an infinite shuffled deck. Some cards have values from two to 10. The jack, queen, and king are also worth 10. And to simplify the rules a bit, we treat aces as worth 11. We pass that list of integer card values into the choice function, and it randomly chooses one to return, suppose a four. The random card function uses the return keyword to pass the four as its output back to the dealer busts function that called it. At last, Python is able to create this list of two values using the value from the face up variable and the output of the random card function. That list is assigned to the hand variable using the assignment operator, that is the single equal sign. This while keyword indicates the beginning of a while loop, which will repeat all the indented code outlined in gray as long as the condition is true. Remember, we want to simulate the dealer continuing to take cards as long as their hand is worth less than 17. To evaluate this condition, Python first calls the sum function using the list in the hand variable. This built-in sum function adds up all the values passed in and returns it. Python then asks if the left side of the expression is less than the right side. For now, the condition is true, so Python begins to run the code inside the while loop. We see another call to the random card function to simulate the dealer taking another card. I like to think of functions as recipes. We defined a recipe for making random cards earlier. This time, the recipe returns the value three, which we assign to the new underscore card variable. 
To add the newly taken card to the dealer's hand of cards, we use the append list method, which adds the value to the end of the list. Python reaches the end of the while loop. It goes back up to the condition to reevaluate it to see if it should repeat the indented code. Python calls the sum function using the updated list in the hand variable, then evaluates the condition. 13 is less than 17, so the condition is true, and we run the code in the while loop again. We call the random underscore card function, which has Python run the code from before again. Save the 10 it returns to our new underscore card variable, and append it to the end of the hand list. Reaching the end of the while loop means Python will re-evaluate the condition to see if it should repeat. The sum function returns 23 this time, and the expression 23 less than 17 is false. A while loop stops repeating when its condition is false, so it skips down to the end of the loop and runs line 12. Python evaluates this Boolean expression, which compares the dealer's combined hand to 21. In blackjack, the dealer loses or busts if the total was greater than 21, like it is here. This means the function dealer underscore busts returns true as its output, and that true can be used in this print function, displaying the result to the user. The code as written plays through one possible outcome if the dealer has a six as their face up card, but what if we wanted to simulate many possible outcomes? How can we figure out the probability of the dealer busting so the player can decide an optimal play sequence? The code inside our functions does not need to change, so we can clear that code from our minds and focus on the outside logic. We will ask the user how many times to simulate the code, create a variable to collect how many times we observed a bust, use a for range loop to call the dealer underscore bust function that many times, and finally print the proportion of busts to total games. When we tell Python to start running the code, it starts at the top and creates two functions, random underscore card and dealer underscore bust, just like before. The code asks the user for the dealer's face-up card using the input function, and converts the returned string to an integer using the int function, and a similar process unfolds for the number of simulations. We initialize the bust variable to zero and reach the for loop. This for range loop creates a variable called s that will track which simulation we are on. The variable s will have the values from this range function, which will start at zero, stop at 1000 from the sims variable, and because we did not give a third parameter, we'll step by one each time. This means Python will repeat the code in gray 1000 times. Inside this loop, we pass the card variable to the dealer underscore busts function, which in turn calls the random underscore card function as needed before returning true or false, depending on if those numbers exceeded 21 or not. We save the return value of the function to a variable called did underscore bust, and then use an if statement to ask a question about the contents. That variable is true, so we run the indented blue code to add one to the busts variable using the plus equals operator. We get to the end of the if statement, then the end of the loop, so Python goes back up and advances the s variable to the next value and repeats the indented code again. This time, the random card values cause the dealer not to bust, so we skip adding one to bust. Python keeps repeating the code in the for range loop until the end of the range is reached. Although Python can run all 1000 iterations in less than a second, animations would take quite a bit longer than that to make and watch. Let's skip to near the end, now that we've seen a few iterations play out. Python has reached the end of the range, and this stops the loop. Python starts executing after the indented block ends, here on line 21, by dividing our busts variable by the total number of simulations in order to print that proportion to the user. It looks to me like the dealer busted about 44% of the time when they had a six showing. That is useful information to people playing blackjack and trying to decide what to do. I hope this animation gave you an intuitive feel for how function calls work, how they pause execution in one place to go run code somewhere else. In this way, functions are useful tools for organizing and reusing code. 
I hope you are able to effectively use functions to organize your code that you write. Happy learning.